Welcome to another Camtasia Quick Tip. I'm Rob Moore. This video is all about picture in picture and how to make it look way better than just a simple rectangle in a corner. I'm going to show you how to create custom shapes and use them to create custom masks for displaying really cool picture in picture effects in your videos. And I'll do this all from within Camtasia Studio, that is, without using any external software. A while ago, I made a video on how to make a circle mask for picture in picture, like when the narrator's face is framed in a circle down in the corner of a video. And I'll put a link to that video somewhere up top. But what if you don't want the picture in picture to be a basic shape, like a circle or a rectangle? That's what this video is all about. But before I go through that, if you're interested in learning more tips and tricks in Camtasia, join me as I live stream this Thursday at noon Eastern time when I'll be talking about and showing you video editing techniques in Camtasia. I live stream on Thursdays, usually for about an hour, and I do live Camtasia tutorials and also answer any questions you might have about Camtasia, Fiverr, or freelance video editing in general. A thumbnail and link will be available about an hour before the live stream begins, so be sure you're subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button below, and hit the bell icon to be notified when the link is available. You'll then be able to post any questions you have in the live chat up to an hour before the live stream begins. So that's this Thursday, April 7th at noon Eastern time. I hope to see you then. Now onto the tutorial on picture in picture using a custom shaped mask. I've got a project loaded in Camtasia that has three tracks currently. I've got an audio track in track one. I have the screenshot track in track two. And then I have a picture in picture track in track three. That was captured by my camera. Now you'll see that each of these are split up into several units. And that's because I've already gone through and eliminated any mistakes that I made by creating jump cuts. So now let's go through how to make this picture in picture a custom shape that's not a rectangle and not even a circle. So the first thing we do is we're going to go up to annotations and we can see we have a whole bunch of different types of shapes available to us. In order to create a custom shape, what you have to do is combine various shapes that you see in here. So in this example, what I'm going to do is create a custom shape that is round, but also has a flat straight edge on one side. And I can achieve that by combining a circle shape with a rectangle shape. Let me show you how to do that. Here's a rectangle shape here. I'm going to drag that onto my canvas. And actually, let me just hide the screenshot track so that we can see this better. Okay, so I have a rectangle shape here. Now I want to drag on a circle shape, and I can see one here. Let's drag this over. Okay, now let's resize these so that I get the shape that I want. And what we do, what I'm going to do is hold down the shift key as I drag the circle shape larger. Okay, like that. And now I'm going to alter the size of this rectangle shape. You notice it snaps to the edge of the circle so that it's exactly the same height as the circle is. And that's good. That's what I want to do. Let's continue resizing our shape. And now another thing we want to do, let's make these the same color. So let's highlight the rectangle and let's use the color picker tool to make it the same color as the circle. So there is a custom shape that I've made. It's actually still two different elements. So what we want to do next is I want to combine those into one element. So what I can do is select both of these and then right click and then click group. Now it's one element. And as we can see in the timeline, it's been grouped together. Okay. So now this, our, our custom shape is coming along. And if I want, I can even, I can rotate this. Uh, or move it to wherever I want. Uh, but the next step is I want to make the picture in picture camera shot here larger than what it is. So the way to do that, instead of just selecting one and then dragging the corner and making it larger like this, that's only, because I've got all these jump cuts in here, that's only going to change the shape of this one. So let's just reverse that. I need to select all of these. And then I can drag them all at the same time and make this larger. So what I'm looking for now is the size of the area that I want to be um, in the picture in picture. And that's basically my face and maybe a little bit of my shoulders and whatnot. So I think that's, that's probably a good size there. Okay, so now let's take our mask. And actually the next thing, I want to put this in the right side. I don't know if I want it in the right top or the right bottom yet. But I want it on the right side, and I'd actually like my straight edge to be on the right side and this curved edge on the left. So an easy way to do that is with the object selected, 
Let's click over here into its properties and on under rotation with the Y axis, let's change that to 180 degrees. And it's that simple. Now I've got it rotated to and facing the direction that I want. Uh, another thing I want to do is I think the tail of this or the right side of this is too long, too wide. And I want to make it narrower and I want to decrease it on the right side. Now the way to do this is with the object selected, let's come up here to crop and drag in the right side to make it a little smaller. I think that looks good right there. Okay, that looks great. So we can use that as a mask. Now, an easy way to place this over my face and get it in the right spot is to bring down the opacity of the shape so I can see what's underneath it, like so. Okay, now we can play around with this and get it exactly the way we want it. I think it's still a little too small, so let's drag the corner of this and make it a little bit bigger. Uh, maybe that's a little too big. There, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to now make a copy of this and I will show you why later. Um, but now that I know the size of this, I'm, I'm going to go control C and control V to make a copy of this. And let's just move this one out of the way. Okay, we'll come back to that later. So now let's with this one under properties, let's bring the opacity back up to 100%. Now next, we want to apply our mask. And the way we do that is with the object selected, let's come over here and click More, click Visual Effects. And if we scroll down, we see this Media Matte option. We're going to take this and we're going to drag this over the image and release. And there you go. That's our mask. However, and actually before I continue, let's, let's unhide the screenshot track so that we can see what's underneath. Okay, so we still have this secondary shape up here. And again, I'm going to come back to that. Now here's our mask. You might think that's finished, and but it's, it's not quite finished yet because if we try to move this, notice how they're not together. The mask and the video that it's masking over uh, are not connected. So let's just control Z to un undo what I just did. And now what we have to do is come down to the timeline and stretch this along the timeline so that it, it covers the entire length of the timeline. And let's also do that to the second shape as well, this one here. I just want to move that out of the way for now. And now to avoid this effect here and actually group it together with the video that's underneath, I have to highlight that and all of the individual videos that are underneath and then right click and click group. Now they are grouped together. And if you try to move it, it all moves together, just like that. One more thing, one more step that I like to do is just to clean this up a little bit. You notice how the shape comes all the way much farther over to the left and to the right uh, than the area we're dealing with now. And that's because that's the size of the underlying video. But we can crop that extra space out of the way. We're not going to need that. So let's just tidy this up like this. Crop in the image. Okay, and now we can place this wherever we want. Do we want it here or there, wherever? And if we scrub the play the playhead, we can see that the picture in picture is in the custom shape that we want. Now the last step was this shape here that I copied. It's the same shape as this. So what I want to do is I want to change the opacity back to 100%. I want to enlarge it make it a little bit larger than it was. And now I want to put it underneath the the uh, picture in picture that I have. So here's the picture in picture on the timeline. Let's drag it up to expose a blank track here and move this secondary image down to the lower track. And now we can see that the picture in picture is above the secondary image that I created. And what we can do is use our arrow keys to place one right over top of the other. And now what that has done is created an outline around our picture in picture. Next thing you can do is you can highlight the, the lower one, the yellow outline, and we can change that color if we want. So let's say if we wanted it to be, oh, I don't know, a, a red color, we can change it like that. And now we have a red outline. We want to group the lower 
image as well as the picture in picture. So let's select them both, right click, and click group, and now they're grouped together and we can move that anywhere on the screen. And just so we know that this works, let's just click or let's just press the space bar and play the video. Here we are in Camtasia, and as you can see, I already have a project loaded, and this or we can just kind of scrub through the video like this to make sure that it's that it's working. And it is. One more last little trick that we can do is if you want to give this a bit of a 3D effect, we can apply the drop shadow to this picture in picture. And the way we do that is with this entire group selected, the picture in picture group selected, let's come over to drop shadow, that's under visual effects, drop shadow, drag that on here, and that applied the drop shadow effect. Now it's hard to see because our background is a dark color and if we look over here at our drop shadow properties, the color is set to black. So what we can do is we can actually set that to a lighter color and then maybe increase the blur, increase the offset if we want, the direction to which the shadow is, is going, just like that. And so now what we have to extend this is this bit of a glow effect the around the picture so, in picture. So that no That's it for now. Remember to stop by this Thursday at noon Eastern time for my weekly live stream, where I answer your questions on video editing using Camtasia and freelancing as a video editor. Also, if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I release a new video. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon.